What's going on out there, people? We are back again for another TV show recap breakdown for the man that fell to earth. This is episode three, and uh, I have my co-host here, Lucas. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? That fell from earth. Man. Dude, like a theme song for this show. Look, first <laughs> off, <laughs> I'm gonna openly apologize because I have. Uh, we were supposed to start this review like an hour and 48 minutes ago. <coughs> and uh, I had like an emergency I had to take care of. And Lucas is being very gracious and still here. And it is 1148 at night. So if we start to nod off, you see your eyes red. That's the reason why. But I just want to openly apologize to Lucas. Lucas, thank you for being here, man. Because I feel like the man that fell from Earth. Look, I'm silly right now. This is late. <laughs> all, so, all I remember is synthesized robot music in my head right now. Go. <laughs> so I'm going to kick us off. So we got a new player in town. His name is Hatch Flood. Hatch Flood and E Flood, um, they are brother and sister, and they have this um, corporation that's called Origin. Origin essentially is a conglomerate that is connected to Thomas Newton that he put a lot of emphasis on where he wanted to patent the next evolution to where his technology was going to go. And the opening episode, we see him kind of like, you know, kind of degrading somebody else's work at the time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he gets pulled to the side and like, yeah, we got to let you go. And he's like, what I do? I didn't do nothing. And f find out that he is connected directly to what, Thomas Newton is trying to do, and they call him the wizard for a reason because he has all the recountant information, how it's going to affect the atmosphere, how it's going to affect the stock options. Everything is all kind of tallied by him. And his sister, who was given the company to the, from the dad, just cannot trust him for the life of her. So that's where we started mm -hmm. off in this episode. And then the other side of that is where we left off, which was where um, Faraday. Faraday had essentially was convulsing on the ground and we were talking about this last time. I was like, is he going to stick with this? Is something going to stay with him? And they openly answer that question very quickly because he proceeds to kind of like, All right, can we go now? And then he just starts to let out this bowel of like blackness and it just goes into the atmosphere. And I was like, this is the most science fiction -y thing ever because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if this is the, the infirmity that, you know, her dad had. I don't know if this is something that is a part of him that's just coming out. But it went through the vents and it went out and proceeded out. And he was kind of like answering her questions of like, is he going to be cured forever? And he was like, yeah, for the rest of his life, he's going to be good. And she just was like overtaken by the whole entire thing. She had to have Ooh. a real moment with her dad and being able to embrace him with him being able to use his hands and his arms. And it was such an emotionally resonant moment. But as far as the opening of this, with these two different storylines converging, what did you think about how this episode uh, opened up? <laughs> well, when you get the Flood siblings and it opens up with them, you understand their, or it's explained to you their connection to Thomas Newton. And everything that he did and every bit of technology that he brought to the world. I mean, it's quickly brought up that one of the things that they suspect has gotten out is something that they were even using. Right. But it's still an, an invention, a patent that he came up with. And this, again, this has been what, 40 years? 40, 45 years. Or 45 like that. years ago that he was coming up with stuff that just now they're worried about people getting out of an invention for of his that just again it shows his impact it shows exactly the way the world may eventually view faraday the way they view thomas newton right but then at the same time we have you know faraday having his green mile moment <laughs> as that was going on all i thought was wow that's the same thing that john coffee did you're right you're right <laughs> oh my god black stuff that's exactly what john <laughs> coffee spit out in, in the Green Mile when he absorbed, you know, someone's bad, bad part, bad energy, bad disease, bad whatever from their body. So it was it was cool because you kind of knew I kind of knew exactly where it was going there. Mm -hmm. But it's still a, it's still a great setup because it, it helps take away excuses. Right. 
from Naomi Harris's character. And that was the key part here is if your father is fine, what excuse do you have for giving up your life's work? Right. You don't have one at that point. And I think they did a good job, you know, with setting that up. And then the next following scenes of her sh- and being shown to her, like, you really have no excuse here. Not at all. Like, you can no longer use your dad as a, as a reason why, even though her dad never wanted her to use him as a reason why. Right. Yeah, he even kind of brought up, it's like, that was killing him inside. Like, that's part of the reason why he was kind of like, I'd just rather not be here because I see where this is where your trajectory is going because mm-hmm. of me. And uh, I thought it was a really well acted moment. And like her dad or the actor that plays her dad has got such uh, charisma that it's, it's just fascinating to watch. Like she would tell kind of just be the, the different one to the side. And uh, cause it, he, he gives to tell like a lineup, like he cuts his hair gives him one of the good fitted suits. And kind of when he walked out of there, I was like, oh, okay. I see where we're going with this. So I thought that was actually really a little dope little moment. Um, I can't remember how they ended up at the hotel or at the pool, but the moment that he was, <laughs> oh, he got into the pool and just sitting there rifting. And that was, that was after the quantum reactor, if I'm not mistaken. Right, that's right, because they were uh, they were driving down the road. And he was explaining to her, like, you know, I need you to do this. And she was like, mm-hmm. that doesn't even exist yet. And he was like, yeah, it does. He was like, no, it doesn't. And he presumes to spit it out and then puts it in this uh, this oil rig and puts it there for the container. And it just all of a sudden starts back up. And she was like, you have that in you? And that exists? And it throws her completely off. And he was, mm-hmm. he was like... Well, we need the wizard to implement this and see where it needs to go. And then I think that's how you, like you said, that's how they got to the yeah, hotel. Because he, he brings up that that's who Thomas told him to look for. Right. That when he was the missing piece of getting this out to the public. Right. Because it's not just one thing to create something of that nature. It has to get out for people. And that, that was the concern. And again, you see at least he's following the blueprint here. <laughs> you know, for anyone that may didn't know that that's exactly what he was doing or was aware of, you know, what, what was the purpose of Faraday and how was all of these grand ideas supposed to ever get out to the world? And then you found out, hey, this entire time he's been following a blueprint laid out to him right. by Thomas Newton, which is so, crazy because, again, this is 45 years ago. Wait, so the the title of this, The New Angels of Promise, that's a David Bowie song, too? Yes. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Um, so yeah, so when they were uh they were at the the hotel, uh he was out there in the pool and <clears throat> he was looking up, he was like the stars just look differently. I think that was the first time that I seen Justin or Naomi Harris's character kind of like let her guard down with him mm-hmm. because she decided to dip her toes in the water and just have like a real cordial conversation with him. And it was really interesting because I, I'm curious to see where their relationship goes once he gets what he needs, because I don't know how much of this is going to be a codependency kind of thing. Because like once she engineers it and manufactures it and she's working, like he's already given her so much. He's given her a purpose to maneuver towards her life. He's fixed her, 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 her dad. Um, he's shown her daughter what her capability is of the unknown. Mm-hmm. So how much of this is going to be a codependency in the bridge of their relationship? Because I'm like, eventually, once it's, once it's done, like he could probably just dip and leave. So how where is their where is their relationship going to go? Was something that I started to kind of question in this in this episode because they seem almost inseparable at this point. And he's evolved a little bit too, because now he's taking along the iPad. He's he's understanding how to communicate with people a little bit better because he's digesting a lot of information through the iPad. I think it's, it's it. Their relationship is built more on. I don't think it's a trust issue. I think their relationship is built on a need, and you gotta kind of wonder because, again, if we go back to the first. Uh, the, well, at this point, they almost call it the original, and with this possibly being a sequel now of this, 
Thomas Jerome Newton used humans to get what he needed to get. And he didn't necessarily leave them in the best place humanly possible when he was done with them. Mm. And you gotta wonder, it's fair they doing the exact same thing. He knows exactly what to say. He knows exactly what to agree to. But again, not, not to get too far ahead, but it's a conversation that happens between uh, Justin Faraday and Hatch as they're explaining, or Hatch is explaining what the creation that he has, what it actually means to the world. What it's going to do, how the yeah. infrastructure is going to completely yeah, but fall again, beforehand. Again, that, that's that part there. But as it pertains to the, the pool scene and her trusting him at that moment, I think it's because she no longer... Again, once you took away her dad as being an issue, what else is there that holds her back from trusting him? Right. It's always just been her dad because that's been her focal point is concentrating on doing whatever she had to do to make sure her dad is taken care of. Well, he just healed your father right. for the remainder of his life. That's not an excuse anymore. And when she can't get an excuse not to follow or not to like <laughs> Faraday, she falls deeper into the spell that he casts. Yeah. Yeah, it's just interesting because now that he's got his little lineup, like he he's carrying himself differently. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not as awkward anymore. I mean, he's still you know, he's still weird, eccentric. Because that party was he's he's still really eccentric. Awkward. He was he's very still eccentric. But he, the way he comes across to people, he can blend in a lot easier. Um, and it's just very fascinating to kind of watch him evolve. And I think Chua is doing a really good job of allowing us to see his character evolve yeah. in a very slow progression way. It's not like really quick, but it's yeah. not. It's not like really slow either at the same time. Um, I like Hatch because I did want to talk about that that moment where he uh, he sees the well, I think they visit him after he just saw a client. They're out in the parking lot. They tell uh-huh. him, like, look, I got this going on. Can you check this out? He's like, How do you know that? And where'd you get that code from? He's like, he made it. He's like, that's impossible. And then he yes. told him where it came from, and he was freak out. Because and he, he knew he knew the implications of where they uh-huh. came from. He was like, uh-uh, bro, they ain't, they ain't come from this world. <laughs> he said the last person I knew who had that understanding, I had thoughts of where he came from. Right. And well, fears of where he came from. Right. So he must be from the same exact place. Again, it just all of this again leads back to one Faraday following a, a plan laid out by Thomas. Two of him exposing himself to the world the way Thomas did. And what are the repercussions behind him doing that? As they clearly show us the repercussions of what happened with Thomas when he did that. Right. Right. Because that, going back to the whole Spencer thing, Spencer goes and recoups with, I guess, his his lead or his supervisor. I don't know if her name is Kate. I can't remember her name. But he he tells her, like, this is what I found. This is what's going on. I torched the place. Matter of fact, no, even before that, he looked at the tape. He looked at the old he, footage. He looked at the old footage and he saw Thomas strapped down and them proceeding to not only take his eyes, but they were opening him up. Well, they were feeding him alcohol. Yeah, true. Yeah, they, were, they were giving it to him. And, I don't know if they were doing it intravenously or if they were doing it and just giving it to him. But he was like, yeah, give me the, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. And so they had proceeded to open his mind up as well. So I I don't know all they did to him, but he took the whole entire thing and was like, you know what? This is crazy. Yep. Um, we need to do something about this. Put me on. And I think that was the first time I, I, I thought that the last episode, that he was mentally unstable. But the way that he kind of came off, I was like... Girl, you know better than to get this man nothing. Like, you need to take that information, keep it solid. I think she was also lying as well. I think she knew. I think she knew what's going on. I think she was just needing somebody to confirm it. So in the event that he goes off the handle, she can burn him, to be honest. Well, yeah, she handled him like a handler would. Yeah. Like she's like, okay, I'll give you just enough information that if this goes south, I can get rid of you and blame you for everything. Right. I mean, down to him letting letting her her letting him pick who he should work with. Right. 
And then her giving him the warning at a point, like, are you sure about this? Like, we know your chase for the, as she said, the great white whale. Right. Which the moment you hear that, you know that that means that you've been chasing this thing for the longest time and you're not letting it go. Right. So if that's the case, you're kind of reckless. Mm -hmm. And while she believes you, she's like, eh, but I still <laughs> need to protect myself to an extent. Right. Yeah. So she was kind of like, yeah, well, you know, we'll see where your information goes. And, and anybody that does that, you know, for a fact, because you're right. Like she let him go out there to those woods without any kind of help or assistance at all. Mm -hmm. So meaning that if he had died, she wouldn't have lost it is anything. What it is. Yeah. She wouldn't have lost anything. She would just have somebody else maybe do it, but couldn't do it as good as him. And so I think she's doing the same exact thing with this situation. His conversation with that new uh, assistant was weird because, I mean, I knew he was a jerk. Uh, of course. And I know that he revels in it. Uh, but I didn't anticipate her being the way she was. She's I don't like him. Right. That's the thing that's so weird. Um, and I think that might end up burning him later, to be honest. Well, clearly, the, mo the moment he tried to do research on her and, and brought up a horrible thing that she did, and he said, clearly, it was, out of, it was out of spite. It had nothing to do with that was the right thing to do. Right. He did that out of spite. And for her to reverse it on him and bring up a situation where he did the exact same thing, that's mutual respect for one another and their actions, but also you understand the person that you're dealing with here. Right, exactly. Like, in the end, I can't trust you. Yeah, and that's weird because she did do a background check on him before she, before she even came into the... I was uh -huh. like, oh man, yeah, nah, there's some other stuff going on with this. And she was smart enough to actually be the one to find the signals as well. Yeah. So, uh, she's smarter than him no matter what, but he right now is trying to lay his foot down that he's in control when but he's... Nah. He's still looking for Thomas. Right. That's his end game is to find Thomas. And while he does know Faraday is there and he understands that you're another creature with the same thought patterns as the first creature. So I need to find you and stop you. But again, we don't understand the real purpose. If everything that Faraday is saying is true, what would be the purpose of stopping him? Right. Like, what's the end game? What's the end game with that? But again, it's something that Hatch brought up when he brings up. Do you know what this means if you've created this thing? And he right. lays it out, and none of what he laid out was positive. Right. But it was all actual. It was all actual, factual. That if if something like that was created, this is the steps, and this is what would happen next. Yeah, it is interesting. I am glad that Naomi Harris, even though she respects and thanks him for what she did what he did for her father she also was like look once i help you build this uh -huh. i need you to leave the schematics behind so i can recreate this you can do what you want to with it but i need you to leave the schematics behind so we can be able to save it, our planet it was after he told her the time frame right like what, i think it's 2030 Something that like, the yeah. level the heat level off of the water will become unsustainable and after that and then point, in decades, it's done. That'll be it. It's done. And you know, from a standpoint of caring, as he again points out to her, like you attempted to create this thing, and you came closer than any other human before you to creating this thing. And even when you stopped working on creating this thing, you still went to another field where your goal was still to protect the earth and people. Right. So she she is very. She's inquisitive, but she's also very cautious of him mm -hmm. as well, which is smart. Uh, so it's it's gonna well, be gotta be at this point because he's still an alien, right? That she doesn't know much about. Right, right. Because <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, when the wizard finds out what he finds out and decides to, you know, quote unquote, help them. He has a nervous breakdown. He just starts drinking. He can't stop drinking. The whole entire whole entire rest of the episode, he just can't stop drinking because he understands the ramifications of what's happening. That whole conversation and breakdown of what this will do for the economy and everything in between, it was just because gold. You always hear the positive parts of something of this nature being created and 
Mm -hmm. Oh man, you can sustain this. You can do this. You can do that. And he brings up the truthful statement of it all is okay. But if you created this, you destroyed an entire need for something that has built the world's economy. Yeah. What do you think would happen? Right. The whole if you don't have to depend on fossil fuel anymore. Mm hmm. And that gradually over time trans transcend to something else. If you can tomorrow stop using all of it, what do you think is going to happen? Right. And I think that was the most interesting part that he pulled up in there. Like, hey, you take away this. You're going to take away this many jobs. People are not going to be able to eat because you're stopping doing this. Like, it's repercussions behind creating this, right. which kind of makes you wonder at that point, like, how much is it worth it? To Justin to continue this. That's a, that's a we really understand what point. it is to Faraday. That's this is save his planet. Mm -hmm. But what about Justin? Like, how hard do you push for this to do anything here? Yeah, it's kind of like you plan the odds essentially. But I, I think Rob Delaney did a really good delivery with making us post making us process the whole entire scope of it. Because then after that, he was like, all right, look, I'm going I'm to find a way. I got no guy. <laughs> so he finds a jet. He gets them where they need to go. But on the jet, I thought it was a really funny moment. When they got on the jet, and I think he asked he asked the hostess there, like, is this a compressed? Air pressure, yeah. Air pressure, you know. And she's like, yeah. And all of a sudden, his skin... <laughs> His skin starts to bubble up and maneuver all over the place. And they were trying to keep it under wraps. And Hatch is just doing his best, man. He's like, all stepping away. Like, even when they got to the party and people were talking bad about him, mm -hmm. his his sister was like, bro, what you doing here? Because she she gave him a lip fool. She basically was like, you always been dusting me. You doing this. And he was trying to tell her, like, look, the, what's going to come out from this is going to burn you. She still didn't uh, listen. She yep. Still didn't listen. And he tried one more time. Like, look, I have something here. I can't tell you the details of it, but I promise you, you're gonna want to invest with this. But it, it immediately brings you back to the beginning of the episode, where you kind of understand the reason that she was so mad wasn't just the leak that boy Thomas. This was a leak from her. What was left over, left to them from their father. Right. Like, in all honesty, <laughs> and I think one of the people at the party said it. <laughs> and they brought up that his sister was there. Like, technically, you've brought nothing to the forefront. Right. That's why they see your company as a joke at this point, because you're following strictly in your father's details. Right. So what happens if this doesn't go right? Where are you at? And she had to knock this out the park with picking um, the perfect person to partner with moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we get before we get the perfect partner partnership, we get the silliness that is <laughs> Faraday being brought to a convention and what that means to the world. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes there. He's like, I want to show them now. And she's like, wait, it's not time yet. And he's just kind of fumbling around doing all these different kind of things. Yep. Hatch is drinking more. She. She, the funny thing was with Justin, she was like, yeah, you can go up there and Hatch can go up there, but I'm not going up there. She wanted to be completely disconnected from the mm -hmm. whole thing. And by the end of it, she had to be there. I mean, she's if you keep in mind, she's still in shock. She is. She's still in shock that this thing, that as, as when Faraday uh, spits it up, spits it out, I don't know how he did it. Right. When he did it, and she brings up, like, hold up, is, is that a cute cold fusion? Like, no, that's quantum fusion. And she said, this is something that should be years upon years away from being created. Right. So you got to keep in mind, you look at, at her through a lens of her understanding that he has something that should have taken another 50 to 60 or possibly longer to create. Right. A self-sustaining energy source. Like, I'm at this point, how many sci-fi or even dramas have you seen in your life that one of the things said person comes to Earth to have is a self-sustaining <coughs> energy source? Right. And what that means to have it. Right. Like, he's he's sitting there carrying around the arc reactor, and she's yep. just like, uh, what does this mean? <laughs> so, I get it. 
but I think another part of it though is for her, she's pushed aside her intellect and pushed aside her destiny so long that she kind of was like, you know, I don't want to be in that just yet. I need mm-hmm. to take time to do this. But at this point now, she's here and the ball is moving and she has yep. to she has to maneuver it forward down the court. Uh because that display, I thought that was fascinating. <laughs> Like when he was kind of like, all right, it's time. And I forget who said it, what it was. Was it Justin that said what it was, or did he say it? When it, we, what what the object actually was that it was no, cold, she said it. Quantum fusion. Remember, she said it was it a cold fusion reactor. Right. I'm saying that right. And he corrected her what it was. And when he corrected her, it wasn't that she was shocked what it was. It was more of her saying this. Shouldn't be created now, right? This is not something you should have been able to come up with, right? And then him letting her know, like, this is what powered me from my planet, and so this is something that Thomas created. And so it was interesting how it all played out. And the moment that he was like quantum fusion, the sister stopped, mm-hmm. and she was like, huh. Well, everybody did. The moment he went up to the board and attempted to correct the guy's work. Right. Because he said, no, 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 he's wrong. Right. And the moment he says what he has, it stopped everyone in their tracks. Right. Because they understood what it meant. Like, if this is something he actually had when he says he has a prototype of it, Mm -hmm. like, one, that means a form of practical application has already happened if you have a prototype of something. Exactly. And... He left them all at a standstill. But I just want to go back to my favorite moment with him and the bird. Go ahead. What happened? Him and the bird. You don't remember him and the bird? No, fuck this guy. Fuck off. Ah! My favorite part of this episode. Because one, it still shows that that whole scene of his introduction into that party still shows that as much as we would like to believe he's advanced, it is still things he has not been around when he picked up the egg and said, who created this? <laughs> like, he, he had the slightest idea what an egg was. He did not know. Or what a, or what a bird was. Because again, this is his first time seeing a bird. Right. Yeah. It, it was, I think Chiwetel did a good job of like acting off of that. I think when he does embarrassing things, it makes me wince. And I'm just kind of like, oh my god, what is he about to do? I, I feel like I'm Justin when he's yes. doing stuff, and so I'm kind of like, I can't watch this train wreck about it. <laughs> um, but it is funny, and I think he's doing a very good job with it. Um, but when he brings the reactor out, mm-hmm. and they 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 pull it out, I think they do a really good back lens shot where they show the outside area, and you see everything starting to light up. Everything. Every mm-hmm. single light in the building, everything light around the vicinity. Anything on that block because of that self-sustaining energy source is able to feed off of it. And that's just insane. Because I think I read an article a long time ago of somebody talking about uh, wireless uh, electricity, which the wireless electricity would be able to power specific devices on a wireless mm-hmm. uh, level. And I was kind of like, is that going to be hazardous? Is it going to be, you know, radioactive? Like, what's going to be the application of that? But well, to, to well, see it and how they did it, it's because, like, even when they focused in, the light wasn't blinding. It just irradiated. And I was like, this is I mean, amazing science fiction. It, it's something me. that Faraday brings up in the beginning because she kind of asks him, is it, like, <clears throat> radioactive? He's like, Nope, not at all. This is not radioactive. So again, to have an energy source that strong that can power that much and it not be radioactive in any way is a huge game changer. And they played it perfectly from him getting on that stage to him pulling it out. And then you see the rest of the city completely light up that way. Mm -hmm. And you can see just the pride in her face. She's happy that he's showing her. He's showing it to the rest of the world. Right. What I'm looking forward to is what happens with this information? Where does it go? 
Right. Like, how how is the news going to treat him? How is the government going to look at him? Because, like... Of course. Remember, uh, Hatch told her, like, be prepared for the backlash that's going to come from this. Right. Like, he, he's already warned them. Like, understand <laughs> what can happen here. And it's more than a possibility of understanding. You better have, like, either a good place to hide or a very or, good alibi. Or an army of people to protect you. Right. Because the alibi doesn't matter at this point because you've already created this thing. You're right. And now they've seen it and mm-hmm. watched it power as much stuff as it did. It's only natural the next evolutionary step would be for them to try to take it away from them. Right. Because they did the same thing to Thomas. It's true. Um so, yeah, that's part of the reason why I really want to look at the next episode. Um, because my head goes, okay, the government's going to look at, wow, there's a huge power surge that just happened out of nowhere. And now we've got, you know, cameras and video stuff. Like, the news is on this, and they're focusing mm-hmm. on this guy. Who is this guy? You know, does he have a backdrop? Does he have a background? Who is this girl? You know, why is Origin the one that's getting the platform patent for it? Like, I, I, my my wheels are spinning in my head. And then the other side of it is people that are just normal and how they're looking at what this could be. Hey, um, if, if it doesn't show anything else, it'll show just how loyal or disloyal you Hatch is to his sister. Because remember, wow. she didn't wow. want to give him this. Faraday walked up there and wow. created his own opening. She was basically like, nope, I don't care what happens to you. Now, she has no choice. Because what you don't want to be is the company who's following him. You want to be the one that gets like the rights to everything he just did. Right. And if you don't, you're screwed. It's true. And especially with her, because again, we heard <laughs> the rumblings at that conference of what other people in their professions thought about her. The company and her. And yep. the company. Yeah. So um so yeah, I mean to me this was a great episode. Like it it, yes. it it made me immediately want to watch the next episode, which I could, but I didn't because this man right here said we gotta do it, watch it, and then review yeah. it. So because you gotta keep it fresh. If you one, especially for this episode, it, 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 it'll be difficult to do it the other way around. Because then you lose yeah. the certain nuances in this episode that meant the most. Like, yeah, dude, like when he powers that thing and you see it and she asks him, like, how long this is? He said, decades. Like, this little thing can power this for a pretty long period of time. Like, right. that says a lot. As much as it says a lot when he gives her the time frame that this is when the world's going to end. Right. So what happens is it gave her another reason to move forward. I wonder True. if that's the issue with Justin. She always needs a reason to move forward. It's been her dad. Now, when she understands where the <laughs> earth is going to, it's to protect her daughter. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe next episode we'll get more into their home planet. Yeah, I think that would be really interesting because he's got a whole, he's got a wife and kids, right? Yes. I think. I think they implied that in the first episode. Well, he um, says it when he's, um, when, I forget where they, wow. When it was questions about um, how to present it or how to let it out. And right. she was like, no, we're not going to do it. Like, oh, I can't go there. When it was talks about going to London. I can't go there. I have a family. And he's like, your family will be fine. Right, like in all honesty, if we don't go there, there'll be no future for your daughter. She'll right. die. Exactly. But not only will it hurt and kill her, it'll kill my kids too. Right. Yeah. So it's, they they both have a focal point. They both have something that they're fighting for, but she's just on the opposite side of it. Like you said, yeah. she she needs a reason to push forward. He doesn't. Like he he needs a reason to stop for a second and understand what he needs to do to get to where he's got to go. The so they nuances, balance really well. They balance the nuances really well. of what it means to be human. He has not figured out at all. Right, right. So yeah, this is another. I feel like the show is just getting better and better and better. The science fiction aspect is getting more tighter. Um, they introduce Hatch in one episode, and he already 
fits this so perfectly. It's so weird. Um, like I, I really did like uh, his character and the back and forth of banter between him and his sister. Yeah, especially over that le- the leaked information that he's refusing to say he did it. <laughs> but I did. I did also love when when Justin Justin and Faraday pulled up to his vehicle, and he said, "I was told to find you." And to use your anger to push this forward. Like, that's a heck of a thing to say. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm all the way behind this show now. After three episodes, I'm 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 nearly hooked. Like I am hooked technically. Um, I probably if I have enough time now, it's 12, 12, 23. I ain't watching tonight. But tomorrow I'm gonna <laughs> watch the next episode. I mean, because at this point you kind of wonder, like, where's this gonna go to? He said on that stage, he powered a whole city with this device. Mm-hmm. What's next? Right. Where, where are we going to get off with Spencer? He got his partner in crime now. Now he wants to find as much information as possible to, to locate Thomas and to find out what Faraday is doing. Then in time, time, you got the brother and sister. They're trying to manage, technically, house all of Thomas Newton's ideas. Right. And now you have someone who can possibly give you, if you keep him under your tight circle, he can give you just as much as Thomas, if not more, more. Yep. than what Thomas gave you. Interesting. It's the way it the is. best way to put this episode. It is. It is. So we uh we're gonna go. I hope you guys enjoyed our breakdown and recap of this entire episode. Make sure you come back. We've got a couple of different things coming out today as well. We got the baby uh, episode three for HBO Max. We've got something else that I can't talk about or think about right now. And we've got a lot of other reviews. Uh, um, under the Tuscan Sun. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, uh, under summertime the banner of heaven. Uh, summertime under rendering. The, dang, damn it, under the banner of heaven. Hi, family. I was talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds that Ant is doing a really good job with. Uh, oh, yeah, that is coming out. May the fourth be with you. Yeah. Well, And you released the opposite thing on that day. Very tricky, you guys over there. Well, they ah. did it on the fifth, so it's with, okay. With, with Perma. It's okay. Same company, same control. Matter of fact, I want to say same creator. Like Alex has been in charge of Paramount's most of their Star Trek projects. <laughs> and he definitely is. This is definitely his show here. Again, same company, actually. You're right. It is the same company. That's fascinating. I didn't even think about that. So you've got this company who's giving you technically. What I feel is the best sci-fi show right now, and that's this one. They giving you what's currently the biggest sci-fi show, which is Halo, and now they're returning with a rehash of a classic show. Right. Yep. And we do have a review for Halo that just got pushed out today, but you guys won't see this until Sunday. But it came out Thursday, <laughs> so go and check out our Halo review for Episode Seven. We've gone through every single episode as well on that. Um, yeah, we're going to go take share. Make sure you like subscribe, hit that bell button and we'll be back. Peace people.